It has been a long week for British boxing. A lot of outrageous screams and cries for the sport to be banned and the two fighters at the centre of the dispute to be banished forever from the ring. Sent from the kingdom almost. All very emotive, all very over the top. But then I would say that it has happened before and it has been equally ugly and nasty. In fact, with a bit of extra edge, if you don't mind me saying so. There was an infamous fight at a press conference in 1985 involving Mark Kayla from West Ham and Errol Christie, his leading, well, we know, his, his sort of nemesis, really, the guy that had been chasing him for a long time. They got close, it got heated, words were exchanged, then bish bosh and bang, the fist started to fly. It was filmed. And it was put out on TV, it was major, it was back page, it was front page, and the two boxers were fined, but not banned. Record fines at the time, if I'm not mistaken. And I can just have to say, it's a delight to welcome 50% of that crazy, vicious incident to the show. Errol Christie joins me in the studio. Good evening, Errol. Hi, Stevie. Uh, Errol, let's go, I'm going to take you back to 1985, to, you know, you're, you're at the Stackies Casino for your press comments with Mark Kayla. It's a final eliminator for the British middleweight title. You've been verbally challenging him for a long time. You're at the press conference, which is a little bit tetchy, and then you go outside. You go outside for a um, the photo shoot, and for some reason, you don't have bouncers between you. It's just you two and the press are watching. What was going through your mind as you walked from the casino out to the fountain? Well, I don't know if you can remember the 80s. I mean, the 80s was a very, a very hard time. It was very racial motivated. There was, there was a, a lot of uh, fire going on between, between our two people. It was a black v white sort of thing, and it was mm -hmm. very racial at the time. And uh, he mentioned, he, Kayla called me an ugly black B. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I just let all, I just lost my cool at mm -hmm. that time. But I remember, I never punched him, I shoved him. Yeah, and, but in the photos, in the photos in the press, looked like I was throwing a punch. Sure, but I never threw no punch. Not, never, not, not a clean punch. Not a clean punch. I Just would like never pushing. lose my cool. Yeah, I kept my cool. Yeah. I shoved him. All it was was mm -hmm. a bit, bit of shoving. But I would, shoving. I would argue that when you walked outside that press conference, leaving us inside, having a nice drink and waiting for the second serving of the chili con carne, I would argue there should have been at least one or two security guards between the pair of you. Well, Wouldn't that's you what argue I mean. That? Well, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the, even even the press reporters should have even jumped in there. Yes. But they were too instead busy of, taking instead pictures. Instead of taking pictures. That's right. They well, were too busy taking pictures. But it was it was it was all it was all a shove. I'm 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 standing up for myself and for the people that follow me that I will not be shoved around by these people. So you were dragged off each other, separated, yeah. and then you did it. But you appeared on TV before your fight together, didn't you? That's sort right. Of apologizing. But to, but I mean that was that was just to uh, to, to yeah. calm the nation. The time tension was running high. Yeah, it was there high. was fights breaking out everywhere over this. Um, we was two different people fighting, mm. fighting for different uh, reasons. I mean, I I was fighting for my for my my self esteem and mm. for the people that were following me. And he was fighting. He the the back end I, I thought he had at the time was a very um, anti anti black. Yeah, and which which turns out actually not to have been absolutely the case on the night. It was a bit. It, the night wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't as, if you look through the expression, as black and white as that on no, the night. No, I, it, to be honest, no, it, was a, it was a little bit more complex. But but you got a record fine, and Kayla got a record right. fine. But you didn't get a ban. Did you think that you would get a ban, Errol? I thought I was. I, I thought I was. Uh, I was uh, dealt with unfairly because I did not throw a punch. Okay. I I I merely shoved the man. Shoving the man or punching the man is a different thing. Um, Going on on the Chisora and the the hay yeah, thing we'll is a now. different complete different thing completely. Yeah, in, in, I mean I in, threw no punches. And so so with these guys they did throw punches, but yep. just like your, I mean the similarity I, I'd, I'd like to make between the two incidents is that your incident and their incident, the one lacking, the one fundamentally lacking ingredient is security That's to right. keep the That's pair right. of you apart. I mean, they, 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 these people, they should know the promoters, whoever organised the fight, they should know that these are going to be two highly lighted guys who, will, who want to fight each other yeah. and they're going to let things rip at the press conference, that's the first thing where, where any action is going to take place. It's going to be a press conference. So they should have the people in intact there to stop that. Yeah. And because, I mean, if there'd have been the guys between you and Kayla, you would have been, you would have said some things. That's maybe right. a little bit of pushing and that's shoving. Right, that's right. We but, should but go, no which goes, that's right. That's mm. right. This goes along with all that. Because yeah, five grand's a lot of money. You got fine. Yeah. You'd like well, that. You'd like that in your pocket the, the, now, the, wouldn't you? The, 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 the fine at first was, uh, it was reduced down to about, uh, 
Five. Five grand. Oh, was it higher? It was higher. It was oh, higher. Sure, it was, uh, the maximum, I think, was, I think it was £20,000. I know, I know. And I know then it was... we had it reduced. Wow, good. good we got it reduced to about, about five grand. Well, that makes sense. So last week, Errol, I don't know where you watched the Chisora and uh, David Hayes skirmish, whether it was online or you maybe you watched it on telly, I watched it on telly. the next day. But when you watched it, what for, we'll deal with what Derek said after. I want right. you to deal exclusively here yeah. with the physical side of it. Right. What went through your mind, Errol? Well, I said this uh, for, uh, for him to use them words like uh, "I'll shoot you." Yeah. He drew boxing. He threw boxing, the sport that I love, that brought me to the front. Mm. He drew it back into the gutter, mm. which people like me have been fighting for years to we achieve some of our lives, and they, they threw us right back into the gutter. I think it was dis disgraceful. But you were particularly annoyed by that because you do a lot of work inside the community where you're That's going right. into schools, giving speeches That's right. against gun crime and against mindless knife crime and yet here was a British, former British champion that's right and a guy who in fact this is an interesting thing because boxing saved Derek Chisora that's the sort of irony that's involved right. and it well, saved David Hay that's right boxing all those guys involved in fighting especially these guys reaching the top boxing for me boxing was my saviour yep. boxing brought me to the front no one would have heard of Errol Christie if it wasn't for boxing Boxing, boxing was my was my was my Christ. Boxing was everything to me, yeah. and I love the sport. And I hate when I see big stars like them, David Hay and mm. Chisora. Mm. They're making mockery. They're driving us back to where we come from. We try to avoid to get away from that, and we try to teach the, the children, the young people that are coming mm. up today, that through sport, the sport I love, boxing, you can make your way in life. Errol, I'm going to ask you another question here. Not just boxing, but do you think that the two of those guys fighting was not good for the black community. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't good for the black community. Because it looks like just looks two bad. black guys yeah. acting stupid. That's right. And that's, what people, that's what people were saying people without say, saying. That's right. They were saying that. that that's was, what they really meant, wasn't they, it? They really mean it's just two black guys. Who give a crap about them Them black guys? But Excuse the language, That's, that's the way they are. Yeah. That's the way they are. Um, you thought that when we, you... You thought it, didn't you? That's, that's the right. first thing you thought. Yeah. They, there they go. There they go. These guys are, are leading people. They're out there at the front. These guys have got set a certain amount. They've got set examples for these young kids coming up. They weren't only hearing about these. Yeah. A lot of these guys listen to gangster rap, them rap songs, and they're coming out with, I'll kill you, I'll shoot you. Where do those words come from? Yeah, they come you know, from... It should never have been used in a, in a boxing, in any boxing so, uh, conference. So let, let's move it on, Errol, because your credentials are impeccable. And when I, some of the stuff I've read and some of the radio debates I've been on, trust me, I've been so angry this week, my friend. I've had to do yoga and have a steam and a sauna to yeah. relax myself. And you I should don't call like, me or to come with you. Yeah, no, you're too vicious, man. I've, I don't <laughs> want to get back in anywhere near a ring with you. But let me ask you this, Errol. What should happen to those two? What do you think should happen? And what would you like to see happen or what would you like to see those two guys have to do? Listen, I would not like to see them banned. They're, 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 they're living. They have to make a living from it. Yeah. But I want to see the boxing board... A control and um, give them a serve, uh, a serve a good punishment on them. Yeah. They should be fined or whatever. Big it's all about money. Big fine, big fine. Why not? Maybe maybe, maybe banned for a few months or whatever, mm. whatever it takes. But they should be reprimanded. They shouldn't get away scot free. What They've a, damaged the sport of boxing. What about what about if they were to go with you into the into the schools you go into where kids have, you know, been. Uh, you know, have lost friends who have been stabbed or shot. You know, yep. those, some of those schools you go into in South London. What if they were to go in with you and just see how damaging their words potentially were? That'd be brilliant. That'd, that'd be that'd be a dream. That'd be a dream for some of these kids. I mean, when I walk into a school with kids full of kids, they they, they you want to see the you want to see their faces. Just see the change of their face, the the smiles, the way they the way the, the children. I've I've been into, I've been into schools. I've talked with kids, and the school has gone quiet. The whole this whole room's gone quiet. Mm. Whole and the teacher's saying, I'm wondering what's going on. I've, I've, I think probably they've, they've drifted away, but the teacher's saying, talk, talk, tell them. They're listening intensely to what I'm saying to them. And I'm telling them how they can have sport, can help them progress, go through life. And they must listen to, to their school teachers because one of the things with me, I was a great sportsman, but... But you weren't a great listener to the school was, teachers. That's right, that's right. Now, I know that much for a fact. That's right. So, I mean, I, I, you know, my take on it, for what it's worth, uh, obviously being there, was that... Um, that they should have been kept apart. That's the bottom That's line. Right. And had That's they right. been kept apart, we would have just had a very a lot of bad language, That's but right. a lot of lively, normal bad language, yeah. to be honest with you. Had they been kept apart, there wouldn't have been this big old Ferrari. Uh, Derek Delboch as well wouldn't have been detained. But I've got to tell you, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to see a ban. And I'll tell you for why. Lennox Lewis, in the last 15 years, twice hit people. Um, Hassim Rackman, he threw the first punch. Mike Tyson, he threw the first punch. Held a British licence, wasn't banned. Fight went ahead. 
Uh, Herbie Hyde twice fell through the first punch against Danny Williams and Michael Bent. Wasn't banned. Fined. And so my, my gut feeling is that you find David Hay a load. He's made a load. So let's find him a load. And I'm talking monster. It's no good it's no good finding Derek Del Boy Chisora a monster amount of money because he hasn't got it. So you find him in percentage. So if David Hay's made ten million and you find him a hundred grand, whatever that percentage is, you shoot you find Derek the same amount. But Bunsen, you just you just you just said a long line of things that are happening yes. in the press conferences, right? But each year they seem to get worse and worse. So where does it go from here? He was talking about shooting. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot mm. you. Things have never been seen, never been seen or heard of in a boxing co press yeah. conference. That is. So that where's is, the, the only going to get worse? That is so they've got to plan it now. The they, language they, is too I, strong. I think I think that to, I think that the worst ways that the press conferences will have to be. Uh, Slightly bigger regulation, slightly better control. That's right. That's yeah, right. They need honest, it badly. Yeah, they're they going really to have don't. good security on that on that spot because yeah. these are well-trained guys. They're fit. Yeah. I mean, it would take more than more than one or two security guys nah. to stop them from but, from doing anything. But you, what you can use you, your space. Uh, Errol, stay in the chair. Errol, Chris is talking to me. Listen, right. Errol, Frank mentioned that you're doing a bit of training down in the sort of Kent area. What What are yeah. you doing day to day these days? Well, I've been working with a lot of the kids. We're trying to get the kids off the off the street. We're trying to get them away from crime, and we're trying to show them that there's a way a way forward through sport. And uh, boxing is one of the ways forward. I mean, that's what I know. That's what I love. Sport have got me in the forefront now. And, and, you, and your book still out, still book, selling? Yeah, my book, uh, No I'll put, Place I'll to Hide. put the black in the... Yeah, I'll put the black in Union Jack. Yeah, I'll put the black in Union Jack, No Place <laughs> yeah. to Hide. You can find it... That's right. You can find it on uh, Amazon. In fact, it still sells in tandem with mine. I think we're, we're still paired together. Right. If you buy my book, I think it's six quid. If you buy Errol's book, I think it's about seven quid. If you buy the two together, I think it's a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I'm also going around. I'm also, I'm, I'm trying to start a foundation. Oh yeah, get a foundation to, uh, going. you got a couple of minutes. Tell yeah. about your foundation. We're, we're trying to get a foundation going, which can, which uh, we'll get, we we'll get people to come in and learn the boxing. Because I've, I've trained and I've moved with some of the greatest yeah. fighters around the world back in the day. If anybody can remember Muhammad Ali, I've worked with Sugar yeah. Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, the Hitman, and over here I've I worked with Nigel Ben, Chris Eubanks, and. Uh, I want to show. I want to get these people to come and learn some real boxing. So, so would, you have a, would you have a, a building like a, a base somewhere? We're trying. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a base. And at the moment, we were in London. At the moment, we're going to get the base to set up in London. Yeah. But I'm, I'm on, at the moment, I'm on the road. I'm touring around clubs, teaching kids the moves of boxing because I'm seeing loads of kids that are boxing and they haven't got the basic technique of boxing. Sure. They think it's just about stand up and throwing punches. There's a lot more involved in boxing, as you know. Well, I know, I know one least, thing. I know there's an awful lot of coaches out there that are, that are, that are masquerading as coaches. They that's right. To get them. That's I mean, right. In, in Boxing Monthly and in other magazines, there's all these adverts to become a boxing coach. You can't yeah, go on a right. two-week, can't that's go on right. a one-weekend work. course, have some cowboy tell you. Errol Christie, it is, as always, a pleasure and a delight to have you in the studio. It's